Hey, this is Latif Mikado, and you're listening to the Good Night Freestyle Podcast, where I take some time each night to try and reflect on the freestyle scene, where it is, where it's going, and try to figure out how to sustain it, not just for future generations to enjoy, but also to benefit. So sit back, relax, and let's talk some freestyle. Hey, what's up, everyone? It's Latif, and welcome to the Good Night Freestyle Podcast, and this is episode number 63. Um, It is Monday night, uh, another pretty busy day. Um, The morning, of course, uh, began with lots of errands. I hate running errands. It feels like it throws me off. Every morning, I have to put at least three to four hours into my writing, try to finish up Yes, yes, y'all. And then I like to come into the office. I do that in the dining room. And then I like to come into the office and and get to work, do whatever I have to do, whether I'm doing content for social media, whether I'm doing, drawing up some contracts, uh, whatever the case is, maybe doing some editing, uh, putting a podcast up, um, whether it's creative stuff. Uh, But when I have to break out, when I have to leave, um, man, it throws me off, which is one of the reasons why I don't go to the gym bad reason though (laughs) not a good excuse but I don't because I hate to break up my morning man I just I'm like a robot I have this very precise routine um, that I um that I execute every single morning I mean it work it starts off with you know me waking up really early in the morning jumping in the shower changing Uh, I love to get totally dressed even though I wear shorts sneakers and a t-shirt uh, to work, um, I have to be fully dressed. The only time you'll catch me wearing maybe slippers or maybe shorts, well, I wear shorts if it's summertime, of course. I, I wear some shorts throughout the summer. If I don't have to wear pants, I won't, but <clears throat> meaning I'm always dressed. Uh, the only times you might see me wear slippers on the weekend is if I'm just trying to, I'm not supposed to be working, is basically what it is. So what I would do is, um, I would probably get up in the morning and my intentions are not to come into the office. I might do something else. Maybe I'll go to the living room. I, mentally, I'm still working because I'll be watching YouTube videos. I'll be taking some, t- you know, going on some webinars, tutorials. But you see, that stuff is not like work to me. It's very enjoyable. But that's when you see me kind of chilling with slippers on. But then every once in a while, I make a quick dash into the office i check my emails if i have something I, i'm doing uh sometimes uh, those videos that you see me do they take time rendering sometimes they'll take a couple hours to render just one video so i might set it up render it and then go back in and do you know go chill out whatever i'm doing this is on the weekends if i'm not doing anything <clears throat> um but today i had to do running one of the biggest things that I had and I totally overlooked it was the inspection for my Jeep. Now I have a 2007 Wrangler, Jeep Wrangler. I love my Jeep. It was a used Jeep. I never bought a, a new car before. Uh, cars were never, <clears throat> never, uh, never an important thing to me, man. It was a necessity when I moved out here because I need to drive. But, you know, I don't like look at cars and like daydream. But I love Jeeps. I love the way they, they look and... I love the way they drive. They're just kind of cool, man, to me. You know, the thing is with a Jeep is <clears throat> um, they can be used as a luxury vehicle. You've seen many times people come out of Jeeps in a tuxedo. They can be used as a sports vehicle where you can take off the tops and the doors and roll that shit through the mud and just have a good old through the sand and just have a good old time. Or it could be used as a family uh, vehicle, especially if it's a four-door like the one I have. You keep the top on, and if it's an entire family and luggage and stuff in the in the back, so that's the beauty of the Jeeps, man. I love them. Um, <clears throat> they're very noisy though. Like if you're driving on, on the on the highway and you're trying to, let's say, you can't really be on the phone. If you're having a conversation with someone, especially if they're in the back seat, they better yell. Um, it just gets really noisy. Now, <clears throat> like I said, I have a 2007. I don't know how the new ones are. Maybe those are better. Maybe they insulated better. I don't know. I never, dri- I've never driven one. Uh, but mine is pretty noisy. Not to mention, it's 
they're not aerodynamic, they're square. So you can, when you look at your hood, I remember when I first bought my Jeep and, you know, I'm doing regular speed limit, I don't know, 60, whatever the hell I was doing. And I'm looking at the hood because I'm hearing this noise and the hood is shaking. And I'm saying to myself, I'm like, oh, snap. Will the hood pick up? Will that shit like kick back? Because it only had, well, I thought it only had the two clamps. And if you guys know Jeeps, Jeeps have these clamps that hold the hood down. But no, they don't only have the clamps. They also have a regular latch just like a regular car, so you have to put your finger in there and, you know, move the level and then lift it up. The, 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 the latches are just for, I guess, for looks and maybe some extra uh, um, protection, which I think you need it with Jeeps because, like I said, they're not aerodynamic, and it's not like your regular car. If you look at your car now, most of you, your car's um, um, hood is pretty much leveled with the front end of your body and the end of the car, the body of the car, and it it kind of you know it's aerodynamic, so you know it grabs the the air and it kind of like darts through the through the air, you know. The Jeeps don't don't do that, man. You can feel it pull back on the windows. You can feel it, you know, you know, shaking your your hood. It's it's crazy, but I I assume that because Jeeps are not they're not they weren't made for the highway. They were made for the back roads. People just will drive them on the highway, you know. But either way, I mean, I would I would also think that maybe it also slows down my mileage. I never really sat there and looked into, like, researched any of that stuff. Like I said, I'm not one of those dudes. Like, I don't know. I think I have a 3.8. I don't even know, like, the size of my engine. You know, sometimes I forget what year it is. I don't know the size of my tires. <laughs> this last stuff, I just, I'm just not that dude. You know what I'm saying? I have a freaking Jeep and I have a good mechanic and he, he knows my Jeep. So he handles everything. So anyway, <clears throat> so I had to uh, bring it out for my inspection uh, because it's a 2007. I'm required to get an inspection um, and uh, brought it to my, uh, to my guy. And I had um, my engine light had kicked in and it kicked in like, over the weekend. Now, once in a while, it turns on, but then it turns off, and it never turns back on. So, it's really weird. They were telling me at one point it was like the kick sensor, the knock sensor, is it? Knock sensor. Um, but my mechanic just kind of, he knows I don't want to put a ton of money into this vehicle. I'm really trying to, like, drive this to the end and then buy something new. Um, I will buy a new. I think my next Jeep will definitely be a brand new you know, probably be a 2027 <laughs> Jeep Wrangler by the time I get through with this one. But um, <clears throat> so, you know, he ran some codes and he saw I had like five codes. And I don't know if you guys ever done this, but um, what they'll do is reset it. They'll tell you not to turn off the car to drive like 30 miles. So I said, <clears throat> OK, I asked him, I said, can I run some errands while I'm doing this? He said, yeah, yeah. I said, I got to make some stops. He goes, just don't turn off the car. So I went back to the house, I picked up Angel, she came out, and we went, and you know, since it's Monday, you know, um, we went and took care of all our business, so, and it's the first of the month, so we went, took care of the utilities, we shut down, did a little shopping, I don't, I don't do the shopping, I stay in the car, but I kept it running, uh, by the time she was done with everything, we still had some time left, I was like, man, I didn't even do the 30 minutes, I, sh I mean, the 30, the 30 miles, I should have been done with that, so she got back on, I said, you know what? I said, let's just drive. And so, so we drove a bit, and um, um, and I got the 30 miles. I dropped her at the house, and I went to the mechanic. And when he checked it, he said, the code is still there. He says, I have five. I'm down to three. He said, take it out again and do another 30 miles. I was like, holy shit. So I went and called Angel. Um, she had lunch ready, so she made some bagels, and we actually made a, had a little picnic in the car. <laughs> so she brought a couple sodas and some uh, some bagels and some uh, turkey and cheese or whatever. Made a couple sandwiches. So we decided to drive down towards uh, like Wingate or Marshville, like those areas, which is not it's not the city, so it's a little bit less traffic, in my opinion. A lot of trucks though on the highway, you know, over here where I live, a lot of trucks. 
But um, because <clears throat> there's a lot of factories and like the chicken, like Tyson's and Purdue Chicken, uh, not Purdue, uh, is it Purdue? Uh, Pilgrim's Pride, Pilgrim's Pride, and Tyson are out here. So you see a lot of those trucks around. So anyway, we started driving, and it, it now I forgot to mention it was raining. It had been raining pretty much all day. It was drizzling. This time, <clears throat> it started to come down pretty hard. I mean, I couldn't even see. So I'm like, damn, you know. First of all, I hate to drive. Anybody who knows me knows I hate to drive. It is not enjoyable for me. It's a job. And when I'm finished driving, I'm usually exhausted, man. I'm tired, you know? So, <clears throat> but, so we're here, we're driving, and it's pouring. So I'm like, damn. So, and I have bought brand new windshield wipers. So I put my windshield wipers in, boop, boop, and it's, it's working good. But then it got started getting harder. So, of course, I had to put the windshield wipers up even stronger, make them go faster. What happens? The wiper on my side comes loose. Now, it doesn't go flying off of my thing, but it it, 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 it rolls down on the arm. So, I'm like, oh, shit. Now, I can't even see. And I'm on this highway. So, I'm able to make it to the right lane. And then I have to see because I don't want to go off the off into the ditch I couldn't see anything and finally a good thing it was daytime i pulled over and i pulled into like a little lot and i went in there and i i fixed it i didn't know what i did wrong so i tightened it and i popped it back back on and it was good started driving now i knew i had to do 30 miles i had to do 30 miles so i figured i'll do you know 15 miles once i hit the 15 miles going one way then that means i'll turn back and that will give me the 30 by the time i get back to where i'm going so i'm driving some more finally hit the 15 i turn around start going the other way next thing you know now in our neighborhood they just start doing a toll system now these are those weird ass tolls that you don't even see you only see the sign that says tolls next thing you know you're getting a bill in the mail it's it's the weirdest thing I never knew how they did. This time, I kind of saw what was happening, but I should never have gone through toes. But what happened was my windshield wiper dropped again. It fell onto the arm. I could not see. And when I went to turn off of the lane, I ended up somehow going through the toe. Now I'm in this area that I don't know. These are like brand new roads. You don't understand. My neighborhood is like the, all the roads are being like redone. Like I need a freaking map just to get to the store and get back home. It's crazy. Like they really, really did a lot of changes. Like places that I used to make an easy left turn to go home or right turn to go home are done. You can't. You can only go straight both ways and go down the other block and maybe make a turn, you know. So I end up going to the toll and, and I see a sign that says, you know, 80 cents. I said, oh, man. And now we're looking for a way of getting out. We can't get out. We go a little further. We see another sign that says something, dollar twenty. I'm like, did we just get charged like another dollar twenty? We're driving some more. I'm trying to find out. Then you know, I say it says two sixty. Now, I don't know if this is just one charge. Is it building? I'm going to find out now when I get the bill. Or am I getting these, are these different bills? Am I going to get a bill for the 80 cents and then the one for the 120 and then one for the 230? And and then I think the last one was like $3, three something. So I'm like, get out of here. You know, um, I finally was able to pull over, pop the um, the windshield wiper back in place and it's snapping. So I'm like, what's, what's wrong with this thing? And in my car, I found like a little tie, you know, like the little ties, the bread ties. So I was able to kind of rig it. <laughs> And put it and put it there. Angel's laughing, calling me MacGyver. <laughs> and um, so then I get back into the car, and then finally, now I hit my 60, my uh, 30 miles. Again, I drop her off, and I head to the mechanic, who's only a few blocks away. Now it's pouring, man. It's pouring so hard, man. So I pull into his garage. Tells me to pull all the way in, and then he comes out. He runs his machine. I still got three codes, man. And I'm like, oh my God. I said, what is it? He said, the Cadillac Converter. Is it, did I say it right? I don't even know if I said it right. The Cadillac, is it like Cadillac? Like the freaking Cadillac, the car? I don't know. But I remember having that done on one of my Xterras. And it was it was upsetting because I had all this work done on one of my Xterras and then I had an accident. You know, it was just a big mess anyway and even though insurance covered the car they didn't cover the stuff i just had done to it which was like another twenty five hundred dollars or whatever um 
So anyway, so he's telling me it's the catalytic converter. I'm like, oh man, you know, <laughs> you know, and then I'm like, well, give me a price. So it's coming out to $900. And I'm like, all right. The thing is like right now, I got other things I want to put $900 to. Like, that's how I am with, with the cars. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, I'll try to see if I could cut corners. Like, like. Freaking putting money into my car to me is like, and it shouldn't be because of the car's a necessity. This is just my mental state, folks. This is just me. Putting money into my own car is like I'm being robbed, <laughs> you know? Remember, I grew up riding the subway train and the buses. I didn't have a car growing up, you know? And, and I remember when I first considered getting a car, um, I did the math. I was like, damn. So you buy the car, even if you buy cash, you still got to pay gas. You got to change oil. You might have to, you know, get new tires. And I, I kept doing the math and it just wasn't making sense. Like, I never thought about paying for convenience. Never, never, never entered my mind back then, you know. But uh, but now he's telling me it's $900. But he said, but before you do that, because remember, I have to get an inspection. And I can't get an inspection done if I have that light. If I have, he says I could get away with one um with um, just one of those um, those codes, but not three. He says, listen, you do the one code, he goes, you can still pass the inspection. So I'm like, oh, shit, you know? So he told me, listen, go home, run another 30 miles, and then come straight here. I'm like, damn, I'm already, you know, half a tank of gas, wasted my whole day, um, and then what's the chances of it not working out? So... It looks like I'm going to be out of $900 this week real soon. I'm totally not happy about it. I'm about to put a donate button on this damn podcast, <laughs> you know, a freaking car fund. But yeah, so, but anyway, so that was, that was pretty much uh, my day, you know. And the thing is, I forgot that was a short month. So I really thought I had a couple more days. I was like, oh, no, 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 I don't have no more. I don't have no more time. It's over, <laughs> you know. So, um, so yeah, so right now I'm driving dirty. <laughs> I'm driving with expired uh, stickers. Um, I'm just hoping I don't get pulled over. They're usually okay over here. You know, it's like the sheriff. We got the freaking sheriff over here. Um, they okay. They really, you know, they really don't give you a hard time. Um, you got to really be breaking the law. But they're, they're, all, they're pretty good, you know. Um, I ain't going to say nothing negative on them. They're doing their job, whatever, you know. Um, and it's not as bad as New York. I remember New York getting like tickets for parking like every single week, man. And they, those were expensive tickets. Over here, I haven't had a ticket in years. I have a driveway, so I never have to park on the street. Um, uh, a while ago, I had to park uh, by the courts, uh, by the courthouse, and uh, they were ready to tow my, my my Jeep. I saw it from a distance being towed up, and that was a mess. Also, another story, <laughs> but. So that was my uh, my day, and then you know, came back in and um, just got to work. But it was like so much of my day was already already shot, you know. So so tomorrow I'm gonna bring the car and let's man, let's just hope, man. I, I don't have to. Uh, that could just I just want to get I get the Cadillac converter done. I just don't want to do it today, you know. Tomorrow I don't. I just don't want to do it now, you know. I kind of want to. You know, give it a month or whatever and just, you know, whatever. <laughs> so, anyway, um, what else? Nothing. I finished watching that uh, Gabriel Fernandez uh, trial. Guys, I'm not really into watching stuff that is negative or, like, sad or bad. or, But this is important. This is important to watch. And the poor baby, man, he, you know, he went through it. The least we can possibly can do is... You know, just watch his story. Just watch his story. You know, and um, and it also makes us aware of kids around us, children aware around us, uh, who might be uh, who are getting abu- uh, might be getting abused, and you know, never once assume because they're with their mothers, because this kid's mother was a, a monster. It was she was really horrible and. And now there's like, I think I saw two more cases that are very similar. One, they, I just saw it on Facebook a little while ago where they, the kids stayed in the shower. I don't know if any of you guys seen it. They put him in like, they locked him into like the shower stall. And that's where he actually died. And supposedly, I didn't read the whole story that they fed his body to the pigs. It's like, 
Are you serious? Are you, you know, are you serious? Like, what, what will possess anyone to do? I, man, my, my children are like freaking flowers to me. Like, I, I handle them with the, you know, as gentle as I possibly can. And my grandchildren, forget it. You know, my grandchildren, you know, and it's, you know, just to try to imagine being like that and with these kids, these kids are in our care, these kids. You know, guys, keep in mind, man, we're responsible for all these children, not just our own, all these children. We see something wrong. Listen, if somebody reports my kid because they see something, I can't hate on them, man. I can't hate on them because that's what you're supposed to do. Let the authorities come and investigate if it's that if it's that real, you know? I don't want to stay quiet when it comes to that. I don't think I'll ever stay quiet. I've never had to say anything. I've never seen anything. But I'm, I think I'm a lot more observant right now, like especially after watching this. You start seeing these little signs and it's like, you know, all the, the children don't know what's going on. They don't understand why is this happening. And then this is women who's allowing this to go on with their mother's boyfriends. And it's, it's, it's really, really heartbreaking, man. It's really sad. And, um... But anyway, yeah. But, but check it out, man. It's on Netflix. Yeah, I, I really, really encourage you guys just to check it out. Listen to what I'm saying. Um, it's, I think, seven episodes, maybe an hour long. Just break it up. Watch an episode a day, whatever. It's kind of just get to kind of see what's going on because these, these cases exist. And there's so many cases like this going on that we don't know about and that the authorities don't know about and the public servants don't know about. And there's, there's babies out there right now being tortured because that's what these kids were. This this kid, Gabriel, was tortured. And there's another kid. There's a few of them. You know, they were, they were literally being tortured by their own parents. Imagine that. Imagine that. Who can they yell to for help? The only people that are supposed to help them are the parents. And they're the ones doing the doing the, the damage, you know? So, anyway, prayers out to, to, to Gabriel and all the children. And, ah... Uh, I don't know how severe, I, the, the, I don't think there's a, a penalty severe enough in my in my opinion, you know, not when, the same thing goes with police officers, it goes with doctors, they're soldiers, they're given a certain responsibility and we have to trust them. So therefore, I feel when they violate that trust, that their punishment needs to be more severe than a regular civilian who might do the same crime. That's just my opinion. Anyway, guys, that's it for tonight. I'm done. I'm sleepy. <laughs> I'm ready to shut down. That's why I do this podcast at night. That's why I say, so when I say goodnight freestyle, I really mean it. <laughs> so until tomorrow, good night freestyle. Before I lay me down to sleep, I pray to hear a freestyle beat. For if I die before I wake, I hope to make it to the break.